1972, in New Mexico, mysterious artifacts were found that led to one of the most intriguing scientific and anthropological discoveries ever made. The discovery, codenamed the Ancient Arrow Project, consisted of 23 chambers and connecting tunnels hollowed out deep within a huge natural rock structure in a remote canyon of northern New Mexico. Inside this massive and well-hidden structure, were incredible artifacts of a culture that was of undeterminate origins. In each of the 23 chambers were found wall paintings, various alien technologies, and strange encoded hieroglyphs. By most appearances, the discovery was like a natural history museum from an alien race. It became known among researchers as ETC, or Extraterrestrial Time Capsule. Because of carbon dating analysis, it was initially assumed that this time capsule was left behind by extraterrestrials that had visited Earth in the 8th century AD. However, it wasn't until 1997 that the encoded language found within the site and its artifacts became accessible. It was then that it was determined that the time capsule was actually designed and built by a future version of humankind who were adept in interactive time travel. These humans were from 750 years in our future and went back over a thousand years in our past to create this underground time capsule for the sole purpose of us finding it in our present day. They called themselves the Wingmakers. The material found in the 23 hidden chambers included artwork, poetry, music, and information, all designed to help in the process of deprogramming while avoiding the censorship of this controlled reality. Mankind is at a crossroads, and the material is meant to help set humanity on a path of escaping the construct to realize our own sovereign power we have inside our human bodies, and avoiding going down the transhumanist path where we try to evolve by combining technology with our physical vessels. One of the scientists involved in the Ancient Arrow Project after realizing the importance of the information and that the agency he worked for were in favor of the transhumanist path and had no intention of sharing the information with the public, defected from the group and with the help of a journalist began releasing the Wingmakers material on the internet. The journalist did a series of five interviews with the scientist. The first four were released within the first few years after the time of the interviews in the late 90s. However, the information in the fifth interview was far too radical and would be withheld for another 15 years. The timing had to be right. It exposed the cabal running the government that what we consider reality was really a programmed matrix or simulation. The wingmakers refer to it as the hologram of deception. And perhaps most important of all, how we can exit this hologram of deception through what they call the grand portal with the use of the Sovereign Integral Process. This hologram of deception's primary program is to unite humans in separation. This separation is experienced in every aspect of our life, culture, race, religion, politics, worldviews and belief systems all have this foundation of separation at their core. This aligned perfectly with the image I got in my mind when I had the idea to start this channel unbiased and on the fence. In the image, I could see that the true way to overcome separation was to rise above all the constructs designed to unite us in division and come together to unite as one in love and equality. It was the same message I discovered Jesus had come to teach. The wingmakers explain that the human bodies are biological hosts for the infinite beings that we are inside of them. We are suppressed by deceptive programs designed by entities from a different dimension. Humanity is unaware that we live in a designed reality and that the designed reality includes, well, everything. Although much of the information is out there, it has been twisted in such a way to keep humanity from discovering the truth, to keep us moving from one group to the next, ever separated from the whole. 
and the idea of our reality being a hologram or programmed simulation of sorts was just too far from the way science viewed our reality two decades ago. It's now clear why the information contained in the fifth interview was just far too radical to be released. But things have drastically shifted in recent years. There's been a number of reports in scientific journals in recent years that what we perceive as a 3D reality could in fact be projected from a 2D source. Combining this information with the fact that some of science's most mind-boggling anomalies can be solved quite easily when considering our reality is some sort of programmed matrix. In the double slit experiment, it's proven that a conscious observer makes photons stop behaving like waves of potential and start behaving like particles. This parallels nicely with the way humans create simulations and games, where everything you observe in the game is alive and active, but only while you're observing it. A busy city in a game is only busy where you're observing it. Once you're not looking, it's no longer there. It's only waves of potential awaiting the next observer, so to speak. This is done to reduce the processing power needed to run the program. How about the speed of light being the maximum speed of our reality? And the connection we see between time and space? Why does movement affect time? The closer we get to the speed of light, the slower time moves. This is no longer a paradox when you understand the connection the two would have to have in a simulated reality, where everything is connected by the consciousness engine running it all. Let's consider quantum entanglement, where two particles separated by great distances still react instantaneously, even faster than the speed of light, as if they're still connected somehow. In a programmed reality, it's easy to see that they are still really connected through the matrix programming, and the time and space are only an illusion created by the hologram programming. How about the Mandela Effect? For those who observe reality changing in seemingly impossible ways, it becomes much easier to imagine a simulation where the equivalent of a few keystrokes can alter reality. These edits to reality can be made in such a way that some people see them and some don't. Why residue that points to a single reality that has been altered suddenly makes more sense. Why people posing next to a statue that has been edited within this reality remain in their original pose. Something other theories that rely on alternate timelines and parallel universe never account for. The wing makers explain how human consciousness is the key to suppressing an infinite being, which is what each one of us really are. Human consciousness is composed of three interactive layers. The first layer is universal mind, or unconscious. And this forms the link between the individual human and the entire species. This layer is what enables all of us to see what everyone sees feel what everyone else feels, know what everyone else knows. It is the perfect way to unify a species and separation. In fact, that is the way we feel unification, through the unconscious mind. The next layer of consciousness is the genetic mind, as the wingmakers refer to it, or subconscious. This forms the link between the individual and their family tree, or genetics. This is where bloodlines are expressed. And then there's the conscious mind. This is the unique individual perception and expression, what most of us call our personality and character, which is built on this layer. The conscious mind of the individual is heavily influenced by the genetic mind, especially between birth and the age of seven or eight. By that time, the influence is all encompassing. This was all part of the design to create various religions and esoteric cults that would support a vast hierarchy and order the human species into master-student relationships, and then create a multi-leveled afterlife that would reward those who believed and were obedient to their god or masters. The whole principle that was behind this entire endeavor could be summed up in one word, separation. 
everything exists in separation within the Earth plane and its afterlife planes as well. But according to the Wingmakers, what is real is that we are all imbued with equality and oneness, not through the unconscious mind, which only links us in separation, but rather through the life essence that is us. And this life essence is sovereign and integral. It is I am, we are. No one is above, no one is below, no one is better, no one is lesser. Everything we've been taught to believe that goes against this is a deception. How could this be possible? Because the beings that have enslaved humanity designed a world to which we adjusted over eons of time. We evolved into it in such a manner that we became lost in our world. The veils that have been placed over us are opaque so much so that people operate as human uniforms unaware that everything around them is illusory. It is a programmed reality that is not real. The wingmakers say everything is simply sound, holographically organized to look real. The good news is, each person can step out of this illusion. There is no master here. No God is going to come down and make it happen for us. No ETs, no one. It is each of us. This is what is meant by I am. I, it's like one, one, me, and one, all of us unified. Am meaning exists now, in this moment, not in history or memory, not in some future time or goal, now. The wingmakers explain how Jesus was aware of this deception, but his words were so against the conditioned beliefs that people could not understand them as he said them. And so, over time, they were translated into the form you know them today. The biblical translations simply lacked the original potency with which he said them. To step out of this illusion, it requires each of us to wake up and stay awake. It's not reading words that will change this. It's the profound nature of new behaviors, because these behaviors signal that our consciousness layers are understood as separate from who we really are. We have to operate as I am, we are. If you look at everything in your world after watching this, you will see that our world is designed for a very specific function. And this function is to fill separation. It can be as obvious as the color of skin, gender, and different cultures, to the subtler distinctions between religions and spirituality. But the design is fractal and it infuses everything in this world in this common unity of separation. Ironically, our unity is separation. If you agree, if you also see or sense the separation, you might also decide that it's escalating, not moving in the direction of unity, but further towards diversification and distinction, as if the more granular humanity becomes in its information access and expression, the more it drifts apart into clumps of similarity that feign unity within the clump but expresses separation to the whole. Consider the youth of this world and how impressionable they are. They're transitioning from the subconscious implants of their parents and forefathers to the creation of their own personality. They want to be different. They want to express themselves uniquely and this opens them to influence. This influence comes through technology and culture creators of music, entertainment, games, and books. They bring the tools for youth to knit their unique layer of personality that can fuse atop their genetic layer of consciousness, the subconscious. The glamour models, as the wing makers refer to them, convey a powerful elixir, which is to be selfish and self-obsessed. Narcissism is okay. Nihilism is the philosophy. This is prevalent and it will continue to spread because it's part of the program. When technology is unleashed in the form of global platforms, the impressionable youth will inform their consciousness and personality layers by means of this underlying philosophical belief in nihilism. Nihilism is the belief in nothing. And if kids build their personality and belief systems from these ingredients, they will be more obedient to their internal programs. Because if you don't really believe in the higher reality of our world, you are more inclined to relinquish your sovereignty or the I am consciousness. 
From there, you walk your life according to the program, and the program ensures you are a puppet, whether you are rich or poor. This applies to everyone. Love is a unification force. It is only that, and yet, in many ways, that is everything. From the wingmaker's perspective, it is a very important word concept, even though they use it sparingly. The six heart virtues of appreciation or gratitude, compassion, humility, forgiveness, understanding, and valor or courage are considered the different ways in which love manifests in our behaviors. The six heart virtues, collectively, are the expression of love in the human dimension. When I express any of the heart virtues, I place them through the lens of oneness and equality. That's where they achieve their potency and expression. Then I take that experience and quite literally send it to my head region, imagining the experience as placed in the pineal gland in the center of the brain. This is my way of mailing it to everyone collectively through the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is one, but separation is a fractal energy. It infects everything within the hologram of deception to such a degree that it's not recognizable. No matter how well-intentioned a person or organization might be to convey true information, what often lurks behind the information is this fractal energy of separation and its use of comparison and judgment and all the other tools of separation that distill down to fear and unworthiness. This is how we easily recognize it. A person must understand that they are being programmed. That's a starting point. If you don't understand this basic premise, then why would you choose to change? If you do, then observe the programming inside you, within others in your environment, the larger world, and begin to see how subtle this programming is. In many ways, to observe this programming requires us to be neutral. So we simply observe our internal state and the messages therein, as well as those of the external program, which comes via television, the internet, email, newspapers, magazines, direct mail, and so on. It isn't critical that you know how every program is expressed into your life or what its esoteric meaning is. What's important is that you understand you are being programmed and you seek an internal source of direction, inspiration, and movement. In interview five, the scientist explains his experience with beginning to overcome this programming of separation using the sovereign integral process. You have to learn to direct the heart virtues inward to yourself as well as outward to others. It takes great alertness to live and express in the now Human beings have the tendency to live in our past memories or future concerns. The now is where our life essence expresses. It isn't in the past or future. Only the consciousness framework pivots between the past and future. So if you find yourself in there, you know you are not in your essence. The Wingmaker's philosophy explains how the breath is the magnet of nowness. It's the element that brings the human being into nowness by being aware of their breathing. There are different kinds of breathing that enable the sense of nowness to penetrate more vividly into the hologram of deception. The breath is something anyone can use without a lot of complication, and obviously, it's always with you. It doesn't require any technology or expertise. It's really just a way to shift attention to the core of yourself. The wingmakers write about quantum breathing or quantum pause. It's very simple. You breathe in through your nose for about two to four seconds or whatever is comfortable for you. Once you've filled your lungs, you pause or hold your breath for the same amount of time you breathed in. While you're in the pause, holding your breath, fill it like a suspension of time and fill that space with the feeling of I am. After you hold your breath in your lungs and anchor it with the I am feeling, you exhale through your mouth again for the same period of time and then you pause again your lungs are empty and as you pause you hold the feeling of we are then you repeat the cycle until you feel you're done the feeling of I am is the infinite consciousness of you it is also one I is one it is one thing infinite life 
It is not the mind, nor the heart, nor the body, nor the feeling and emotion of the personality. It is singular in its depth and silence. We are. This is the sense of connection to all. The sense that you are connected and that the I am feeling you held a moment ago is being shared with all. You can use the outbreath pause to place any of the heart virtues that you're working on at that time. For example, I might be working on the virtue of compassion in my personal life, and I can hold that feeling in the outbreath pause and imagine it as being shared with all. The point is that simply being aware of your breath helps, as the wingmakers put it, to center you in stillness. This, by the way, doesn't mean that you're in a quiet room. You can be in a meeting at work and center yourself in stillness through your breath. But by being in this internal centeredness, you are in a better position to feel your own sense of expression. This helps to identify your essence and distinguish it from your mind system. Life essence is authentic in oneness and equality and exclusively moves in nowness. The consciousness framework pivots between the past, present, and future and operates in separation. If you express the heart virtues from the consciousness framework, especially outwardly, they won't have the same potency or effect. Start from the point of distinguishing your life essence in the now. Center yourself in nowness through being still and breath aware. Initially, this may take some time, but it happens quicker with practice. Thought patterns that connect you to separation need to be stopped behaviors too. You can simply say I've identified a behavior that supports separation in this world. Let's say I have believed Muslims are less moral than atheists and therefore less likely to get into heaven than someone who doesn't even believe in God. This is a belief or thought form that relates in separation. I can say stop that but it's not really effective for most people. I can resist the belief every time it expresses itself in my life. But many of these beliefs are so subtle and subconscious that we don't even realize they express themselves in our behaviors and choices. If you apply the heart virtues to yourself, like forgive yourself for having these perceptions, have some compassion for yourself that everyone is infected with these separation beliefs from their subconscious and unconscious mind layers. Be humble that making this resistive alteration is not just about you, but in a way, it's about everyone, because we are one. Appreciate the fact that you're working on this for the good of all. Have valor that you can stand up and resist these separation complexes that lurk in your programmed consciousness framework. You can see how you use the heart virtues to effectively deal with a belief or perception that separates you. Not just from Muslims, but anyone you draw separation lines around. You're operating from the consciousness system, which supports the hologram of deception. You can't have oneness and equality and then say, well, that's true except for this population of society or these felons of the human race. There is no leper colony where humans are excluded outside of the circle. The circle is all inclusive or it is an illusion. This is absolute. There is no other prison inside the prison. We're all in the prison. All of us are prisoners, even those who are in the elite groups. There is no one who stands inside the prison walls and truly knows oneness and equality. It's a process both for the individual and the human race. We work on it together. We resist behaviors of separation and insert behaviors of oneness and equality. We disengage from the thoughts, ideas, beliefs, principles, people, organizations, currencies, food, clothing, fashion, toys, and everything else within the hierarchy whose roots are nourished by separation. It can be done. It has to be done. And it has to be done by us. The question is, if it has to be done, when does humanity want to do it? Now? A hundred years? The sooner the better. So where does God fit into all of this? Some beings present themselves as gods, and some beings manipulate others to such a degree that they become regarded as gods. And there are collective intelligences that move between the quantum membranes and simulate godlike qualities of omniscience and omnipotence. 
but they are not gods in the sense of being the creator. There are even some beings that present themselves as God through a human channel. The view of the Wingmakers is that the oldest civilizations in the universe believe there is a creator, but that this creator, known in the Wingmakers philosophy as first source, is so fundamental that it is the fractal essence of all life in all variations. The relationship is to a creator, not a god. The creator is in all life. God is more of a parent, or in religious circles, a father figure who is humanized to such a degree that we can pray to God to give us things, help us remove obstacles, crush our enemies, and so on. Creator is aligned to oneness and equality, while God is aligned to separation and fear. First source is the creator of life, the manifest reality of all existence. The Creator lives within life as the infinite spark that connects all life as equals in oneness. It is not here to be humanized. It cannot be humanized, or for that matter, reduced to any other life form or thing. The Creator is the conjoining of all existence in the equality of oneness. Too often God is used by religions to separate ourselves from responsibility. It allows us to say, I'm not responsible for poverty or war or child abuse. There is a God who is much higher than us. God created the world. He is in charge. If he allows war and poverty, who am I to bear responsibility? The wrongdoers will pay in hell and the tormented will reign in heaven. So God, or the concept of God, releases us from responsibility. The Creator, on the other hand, is not this way, because we're all bound in oneness and what happens to one happens to all, and therefore, we're all responsible for allowing separation to rule our behaviors. It's important to recognize the difference between the constructs of Creator and God, especially within the hologram of deception. The hologram of deception is designed to make us feel hopeless and powerless. How can one possibly defeat such an antagonist? They have the money, they have the politicians in their pockets, they have the defense and, and protection. They have the powerful relationships everywhere in the world, and, and they have the most powerful technology in terms of surveillance and weapons. Their innermost circle is impenetrable. We can be wide awake and aware of what's happening, but awareness doesn't suddenly, in and of itself, change the chessboard. They taunt us to protest. Wave your signs, publish your websites, fling your fist in the sky, investigate all you want, it won't change a thing. They will tell us to our faces that their power is inexhaustible. This is how they think. They want us to feel this futility and have this overriding sense that the end game is unavoidable. They want us to believe that we are powerless. The wingmakers have written that it isn't the protest that will change this enemy. If we shout at them and practice resistance, they will only squash us. To bring their objective to a halt, we need to push down the wall of this deception. And we can do this by being practitioners of the sovereign integral process or anything similar. If human beings became self-aware, deprogrammed entities who understand specifically how we have been enslaved and for what reason, we can collectively push down the wall that separates us from our true selves. This creates a chain reaction that affects everyone, including the capstone of the elite. The wall falls for them too. It's using the consciousness of the life essence to reveal the inverted reality. It's weaning from the hologram of deception to the reality that all life exists infinitely as equals in oneness. If we remain in separation, we can't solve the problem of separation. If we remain in deception, we can't reveal anything of our true nature. So we need to see all as one and equal in this hologram of deception. And that includes the capstone of the elite as much as the poor and hungry. At the heart of this whole situation is a single reality, and that reality, as hard as it may be to touch, is that we are infinite beings. Everything that is of space-time is within the hologram of deception. Everything. Don't believe the programming that you are powerless. The sovereign integral process demonstrates that you are not merely a programmed life existence. As we begin to overcome the separation individually, it will begin to spread into the greater collective. 
Separation is the key to recognizing the program at work. According to the wingmakers, groups that have this us versus them mentality at their foundation, no matter how enlightened they seem, are just another brand of the program at work.